All right, welcome to another episode of the Power Sports and Rebellion Show. I am your host, Matt Powers. Thank you again for joining me. Don't forget to visit the website, powersportsandrebellion.com. I'm also going to be following over there on Instagram, at Powers Autographs. All right, today's going to be a fun episode. This is going to be for you guys. And I know a lot of you are interested in getting into the autograph business in 2023, Maybe you are uh, stuck in the rat race of the eight to five corporate BS and you're, you're tired of it and I don't blame you. I would never want to do that. That's not for me. I don't want to wear a suit and tie. I'm, I'm wearing my chiefs shirt today. That's my, my attire. We got the NFL draft here in Kansas city, which starts today. I I probably, uh, probably, I definitely won't be making it today. It's a little too crazy. I think they capped it at like 60,000 people down there, but I'll try to make it on Sunday if I can depending on uh, the girls' soccer game. So we'll see what happens there. But So this video is going to be for you here. The setup of the video here is I'm going to be basically talking about if I were to start over in 2023 an autograph business, how would I do it? And what would be some things I would avoid? What would be some things that I would do? And we're going to kind of cover the gamut of pretty much everything, starting up, how to get inventory, all that kind of stuff, marketing, and of course, all the business kind of aspects of everything from like your LLC to insurance and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, I know it sounds fun. This is kind of like a dream job for a lot of you guys to be able to sell autographs, but uh, most of the time you spend not selling autographs. <laughs> There's days where I'm an accountant, days when I'm a marketer, and days when I'm an HR person. So it's all over the place. I'm going to walk you through it all, and hopefully this will kind of help you guys get started here. I've got my trusty notes over here on the computer. So if you see me look over there and you don't like it, that's what I'm doing. All right. So if you want to roast me in the comments for looking at my screen, feel free to. Uh, but let's go ahead and just jump right into this here. How would I do it? Now, it depends on you know, starting your autograph business online, how much money that you have. Obviously, the more money you have, the more things you can do. But let's just assume you have minimal cash funds and you just want to start this off as your side hustle, which is how I would suggest that you do this. I started this business in uh, what 2008 with 300 bucks. All right, so I got the $300 by delivering pizzas. All right, that's how I started. By the way, if you've never delivered pizzas, it's it's actually quite fun. It, it beats the crap out of your car. Uh, I had a Honda Civic, and I must have been replacing the brakes on that thing every six months. But you make pretty good money for working from basically five to ten or so. So if you don't have any money at your regular job, and you're doing the eight to five deal, and you want to get out of that rat race, start delivering pizzas on that. You can save up some quick, quick cash to uh, help fund your autograph side hustle. All right, so... The first thing I would do is make sure that I have the initial business set up correctly. First thing is you want to get your DBA, all right? So you're doing business as name. For example, Power Sports Room Building. You want to get that set up with your Secretary of State, okay? Pick whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Whatever you like. You can always change it later on, I guess. But just pick something. The next thing you want to do, and this is probably one of the most important things that people really, really screw up, is you want to get a separate business checking account. You do not want to be mixing your uh, personal and your business expenses and sales and all that kind of stuff. It becomes an absolute mess if you uh, when you if <laughs> if you do your taxes when you do your taxes. So you want to keep all those separate. All right, hundred percent. Do not mix them. Uh, after I got all that set up there, the next thing I would do is I would be getting all my social accounts set up. Now those are very important. You want to pick some that you're actually going to use. Don't do TikTok because that's probably going to get banned. Don't worry about being on that thing. I'm not even on that thing anymore. But I would do the main ones, of course. You know, Instagram, Facebook, uh, probably YouTube. I don't know many people in the industry that use Twitter to you know connect with dealers and other collectors. Maybe some people do, but it's just not for me. So I would probably use those main three. Get those things set up. It's free, and we'll talk about why here in just a second. All right. Next up is you want to get your website set up. I would, so when I started this business here, we didn't have uh, pl- uh, companies like Shopify and um, you know, uh, Big Commerce and all these places that basically have drag and drop websites. They're super easy. You had to pay a developer every single time you wanted to do changes. You don't have to do that anymore. So go to Shopify. They have free templates on there. I would get one set up there. It's very, very easy to do. I think they have free templates and it charges you like 30 bucks a month to maybe host your site. 
Um, so I would start there. That's really, really cheap. You want to get a website set up, um, and we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. But you don't want to do too much with it too early. And again, we'll talk about that here in just a second. But the main thing is, is you want to be doing this as your side hustle. It took me from setting this up in 2008 to be able to do it full time. Uh, I probably could have started a little bit early, but I was I was working for another company and I was having fun doing that. And I was just stacking up cash doing this. So I was like, well, why, why, why draw on that just yet? But it's going to be a couple of years, probably three or four years. So don't plan on doing this right away. Again, it depends on how much money you have right off the bat. But if you're like me, you just kind of want to start this as your side deal, expect to be able to do it if you can build up some momentum in a couple years. So, but again, it's nice to have this little extra cash that you're building up on your side if you want to go, you know, uh, pay yourself or you want to use it for something else. So it is nice little safety buffer to have. All right. So first thing we need to do is we need to decide what type of inventory that we want to be selling and how do we get that inventory. So if we're starting off with a cheap budget, we're going to have to find some some deals on some stuff, all right? We can't just be going and buying stuff from Fanatics and ho hoping that we're going to be able to sell, you know, Patrick Mahomes helmets and Aaron Rodgers helmets and Tom Brady stuff. It's just it's just not going to happen right off the bat. And those are expensive items and the buyers for those are pretty pretty minimal. So what I would suggest doing is picking items that have a broad base of people that might be interested in those. For example, autographed baseballs, uh, maybe mini helmets, stuff like that, of superstars that you can somehow find deals on, on prices that you can actually afford. Now, where do you get those deals? Like I said, you're not gonna be able just to buy from Fanatics and hopefully that you know you make some sales there. You might be able to, but their stuff's so expensive, I wouldn't definitely do that. But I would look at Facebook groups, uh, of course, auction sites, and I would buy stuff that's already authenticated so you don't have to go through the gamut on that. But just look around and see, hey, what is actually selling here? Facebook groups are actually a great place there because you can see when an item gets posted, how many people are actually interested in that item. People are, how much, how much? Send me pictures, blah, blah, blah. So you can actually kind of get the pulse on the industry that way. So that's a really good tool to use. But again, I would just jump on some of these auction sites and see what stuff is selling for, see how often it's selling. And let's say you've got an autographed baseball with JSA authentication of a all-star, for example, and it's selling for a hundred bucks, well, you're probably gonna have to try to either win some auctions or buy them on some of these groups for at least $70 or cheaper. You wanna probably be looking for at least 30% off what they normally sell for because you're gonna have to build in some profit and also your fees, all right? So that's where I would start with buying some inventory. Find some deals there. Go to some shows. That's a great place to not only connect with people, other dealers who maybe have some signings coming up or they have some deals on some products that they're looking to get rid of. You usually find some pretty good deals at shows. But again, great way to connect and find some good deals, all right? But um, after we get our inventory, we've decided what we wanted to buy, we buy it, how do we get rid of it? How do we sell it? Well, there's really two main ways that's gonna be uh, the, the most easiest for you and the, the most cost effective. Number one would be obviously eBay. That's free to set up an account. You can sell there. You're going to probably reach the most uh, broadest people on there. Facebook groups are another good way. Uh, it, it's hit or miss on there, but you can have some success selling on there if you get into the right group. For example, if you've got some Aaron Rodgers stuff and you jump into a, you know, I don't know, a Packers or a Jets group, yes, you're going to have probably some success selling some of that stuff on there. And those groups are out there. You just got to join them. It's pretty straightforward. But again, eBay is probably the easiest option. I still remember my first sale on there. And I think it was like a Eli Manning football. And I think after fees and everything like that, I made like 25 bucks or something like that, which for me was pretty cool right off the bat. I was like, holy crap, like I'm actually, I'm actually ahead. This is amazing. But uh, those fun little wins are always kind of cool. But you want to kind of prove to yourself that you can actually sell something, you know, pick, buy something and sell it. And then just rinse, you know, repeat that whole process over and over and over again, all right? But you're going to have to pick some good winners. And the only way to find out what the winners are is to buy some stuff and to go ahead and sell some stuff, all right? All right, next up, how would I go about getting customers? Now, 2023 is a little bit different than in 2008 when, when I started. They didn't have the social media aspect, the online marketing, stuff like that. So... What I would do is I would, since you probably new into the industry, I would guess if you're starting your own business here in 2023, I would start off by getting my social channels like we talked about set up and I would just document my journey. 
Tell people what you're buying, why you're buying it, um, to some of the success stories that you have, maybe some insights that you had. Hey, listen, I bought some stuff from this guy, and he was really great. He gave me a good deal, and um, you know, I got free shipping, whatever it is, and help others is what my pointing. If you can help others and bring free information to them, you can actually build up a little bit of a following. People may want to follow you to be able to get some tips on the industry and also to follow your journey. I think that would be some of that would be pretty cool. I would enjoy watching that, seeing someone start off in the industry and kind of see where they progress to and, and kind of see how things are going. There's the success stories, the bad stuff, all that kind of fun stuff. And then I would post that on all your social channels. Uh, of course, obviously you want to do your hashtags and all that kind of fun stuff, but that was kind of, that would kind of be how I would start. It's free to do. You don't have to spend any money on marketing, which if you're getting started off with minimal funds, that's the way to go. Um, and it's just going to be great long term for you to have all this stuff. And be, how cool would it be for you to flash back to all this stuff? I mean, I remember the first videos that I made on YouTube. I think the first video I ever did was a jersey on a mannequin. Here we have our Bobby Knight autographed Indiana University jersey. It is a size XL custom jersey. It's got the general Bobby Knight's nickname sewn on. You know, I think I forget who it was. If you go back to the oldest videos here, I think you can see it on there. It's like filmed vertically, and um, yeah, it's just it's just crazy like how much things have progressed since I've started. So, but that's how I would do. I, I would definitely get some some customers that way, starting off with the kind of the free stuff. All right, all right. So that's kind of the intro on how I would probably get things started and set up. Now, uh, one thing I didn't mention there is if you want to get your business set up with an LLC, you probably can. It depends on on how many assets you have and if you've got anything to basically lose. But eventually, you're going to want to have your business set up as an LLC, all right? So I would definitely would do that at some point, but you don't have to do it right off the bat. All right. Now let's get into the nuts of the bolts and things, okay? So you've made some sales, you're building some success, you've got your little side hustle thing going on here, and eventually you're gonna wanna transition into kind of being like full time, all right? So how do you do that? What are some things that I would kind of do and not do when it comes to maybe, you know, marketing and all this other kind of stuff here, right? All right, first off, marketing. Um, <clears throat> marketing is a something that's gonna be a necessary evil for you to do, uh, but, Again, we talked about getting your website set up. Once you get your website set up, I would not spend any money on like search engine optimization and all that crazy stuff. I have spent, thou you would, I, I'm embarrassed to say how much I've spent on that. Now you do wanna kinda get some basic setups, meaning your, your, your meta tags, your alt tags on your images. You, know, you wanna make sure that your website is initially set up so Google can read your website. I would definitely pay someone to do that. You can find someone on these um, freelancer websites to do it for you. But you definitely want to make sure you can pay 500 bucks or whatever to make sure that's set up initially. But I would not be paying a company to be able to doing you know link building and all that kind of stuff. That's that's kind of old school way of search engine optimization. I would be putting some content onto your website. You know, for example, your videos. Uh, maybe you want to do a blog, stuff like that. I would start developing that. Get your Google Analytics all set up. But no crazy spending on marketing when you're just kind of, you've got this as your side hustle here and you're trying to build up enough cash to be able to make that switch over to being full time. Do not do that, okay? Your marketing is better spent, I think, in the initial years doing all the free stuff and making your free connections. So by going to your shows, that's a great place to do marketing, um, to not only to meet potential customers, but also to other vendors where you can buy and sell stuff uh, from. You know, Maybe you become a wholesaler or whatnot. So that's what I would do with your marketing when you're starting off there. Now, yes, when you get fully, you know, full time and you want to start spending money on your marketing, all that kind of stuff, I would definitely have somebody do that. The, the, the goal in a business, I, I think, is to work less in your business and more on your business. So what I mean by that is we're not trying to do the accounting. We're not trying to do the marketing. We're not trying to do the shipping. We're not trying to do all that stuff. We have others do that for us. So we work on the actual business. By working on the business, we mean coming up with ideas on how we can do better marketing or how we can maybe new inventory ideas, stuff that's actually gonna progress your revenue. Sh sitting around shipping products all day doesn't increase your revenue, okay? It just takes away the time. So that's eventually where you wanna get to, to where you can outsource a lot of the stuff here. Uh, and Facebook or Google or whatever it is you choose to do, 
hire somebody to make sure it's done right. You can find people overseas to do stuff like this. You don't, I would definitely not pay anybody in America to do stuff like that. It's going to be way too expensive, but find someone overseas that can, that can help you do all that. I know it's anti-American of me to say that, but you know what? They do just as good at work and they're cheaper. So why pay more? Uh, all right. Next thing we're going to talk about here is getting insurance set up. Now, what I would do is make sure that you have plenty of uh, of insurance set up. You don't want to be cheap on your insurance. Get with an insurance agent. Tell them about your business. How much inventory do you have? What are you doing? Are you shipping products? Are you where are you storing your products? How much? How much um, would it cost to replace all of this inventory? Stuff like that. You want to make sure you got your 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 eyes dotted and your T's crossed with all your insurance needs. I just did a video on uh, on insurance for your collectibles. And you probably want to have some sort of in-transit policy, meaning if you're shipping a lot of products, hey, this covers you for pretty much everything that you ship, assuming you use UPS or FedEx and you do a signature required. Because if you're shipping, let's say, $10,000 worth of stuff, you don't want to be insuring that every single time. It gets very, very costly. It's a lot easier to have an in-transit policy. So go back and watch that video. I kind of cover it more uh, in detail. Okay, so this is kind of a big one here. And this is going to be uh, – it's, it's not – it's not exciting to talk about, but it's not boring either, is once you've kind of got your business set up, and this is one thing that I would have done a lot differently now, knowing what I know now, but <clears throat> you want to make sure that you get a very, very good CPA in your team, okay? Not one that you've hired, but one that you're paying to do all your taxes. And a CPA slash tax planner. Now, what I mean by that is a tax planner is going to be basically be able to look at your numbers, look at your personal information. Hey, do you have kids? Are you married? Are you renting a building? All this kind of stuff. And they can advise you on say, hey, there are certain things, ways we can structure your business in order to make it a more of a tax benefit for you. Uh, for example, an s -Corp. If you are going to be <clears throat> making over, I think it's like $60,000, you should be paying yourself as an s and not as an owner's draw, okay? There's better tax benefits to doing that. It's little stuff like that that you want to get with your CPA. But my point being is your tax planner slash CPA should be making you money. Yes, you're going to pay them for their services, but if you pay them $10,000 in services, they should be able to save you at least $10,000 on your taxes, if not more than that, okay? They should be good at their job. I spent so many years paying myself the wrong way that I probably way overpaid in taxes. So make sure that as you start making making some good money that you get with that CPA and, and bring this up. Hey, is there anything I can be doing in my business to be uh, saving more in taxes? Because taxes will absolutely destroy your business. You'd be amazed at how much you pay and you're going to start paying quarterlies, all this kind of crazy stuff here. So just make sure that you get with a good CPA. Now, how do you expand? Once you've got your initial setup, okay, now you're transitioning to full-time. Now you are doing this as your gig. How do you differentiate yourself from all the other guys like me? So, main thing is you really want to, I think, and I, I could be wrong on this, but I really think that the future of all businesses is to be as personable as possible. There's nothing more, worse than talking to a robot or with AI getting developed now, you're going to be talking to an AI machine all the time. People are going to get accustomed to that and they're not going to get accustomed to having a face with a business or having someone pick up the phone and actually joke around with them and talk to them and ask them how their day's going and be an actual person. So I would set up your business to make sure that it's as, as unique to you as possible. Now, if you're a big Chiefs fan or whatever it is, Maybe you make it somewhat around the Chiefs. I don't know. Maybe you talk about cars a lot because you're a big car guy. I don't. You have to set your business up so that's unique to you. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with Fanatics, but Fanatics is a big conglomerate. And they don't have the opportunity to really be as personable as, say, a smaller business like myself can. So I would definitely would hone, uh, hone those skills and be as personable as you can. Uh Advertising, we talked about that. That's probably the best way to expand your business once you have already set up. Now you've got some money coming in. You can afford to spend money on advertising. It is tax deductible, so don't forget about that. The more you spend, is 
it does have a benefit. Now, again, you want to make sure that you're having someone do all the stuff for you so you actually get some numbers reporting so you can turn off the stuff that doesn't work and you can double down on the stuff that is working for your business. But again, you're going to have to have enough products. You're going to have enough, enough services. That's why you don't want to be advertising a whole bunch in the beginning because what are we advertising? Like, I don't have anything to really sell you at some point. Now, yes, you can advertise in the initial part to kind of get customers for yourself, but uh, I would rather do that organically initially because it's definitely cheaper to do it that way. Uh, another way to expand is start doing your own autograph signings. Uh, maybe you make some connections with some athletes in your local town. We're here in Kansas City. Make some connections with the Chiefs. I would say the Royals, but I don't think anybody wants autographs from anybody in the Royals. Maybe Bobby Wood Jr. I don't know. So that would be one way to start expanding your business, all right? Maybe you do, uh, outside of the e-commerce, uh, e you start having a physical store. I'm not a physical store kind of guy. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't, I don't like being anchored down into one area and having these monthly guaranteed monthly expenses of your rent. It's just not something for me, but maybe it is something for you. Uh, one other great way to expand is to start wholesaling your stuff. Maybe you've got a ton of inventory on a guy you just did a signing with. Offering out to wholesale to other deals is a quick way for you to make um, some sales and also to move a bunch of inventory in bulk. But again, I think the, if you're really wanting to do this, you're really wanting to get serious about this, I would start by developing a plan, just to kind of recap here, developing a plan of inventory that you initially want to start off by selling. Start by selling stuff that you know, stuff that you feel comfortable with. And buy it with money that you actually have. We're not going into debt to do this silly business here. I didn't have to use any debt at all to build the business. Um, and then once you kind of figured that out, hey, start getting your for some free customers through your social media. Um, and then once you've done all that, then really start expanding to kind of some of the things that we talked about here. But just my main thing here is to make sure that you get your business set up the right way so you can save a bunch on taxes. Oh my God, dude, you would be amazed how much money I've wasted on taxes. It's all gone overseas, I think, apparently in 2023. But uh, anyway, that's a whole nother topic. But hopefully this helps you guys kind of, I don't know, kind of go through the the, the, the ringer here and not have to avoid, you know spend a whole bunch of money on stupid stuff, avoid some mistakes. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I could get into here. Maybe I'll make some separate videos on, on those particular topics, but... This is how I would get it set up and how I would continue to expand it. Um, but again, you kind of customize it however you want. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to do it. But the well, there is a wrong way to do it. <laughs> the wrong way is going into debt to come into this business. But um, but just get started. Make it your side deal. That way you don't have all the pressure to you know make something happen right away. And then when you feel comfortable, well, then switch over and do it full time. So again, hopefully this helped you guys out. Don't forget to visit the website, powersportsrevealing.com. That's going to be followed over there on Instagram at Powers Autographs, and I will see you on the next episode.